Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Francis of Assisi Parish. Today, we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider is Father John Alderson. Worship aids for this Mass can be found on the parish website. Our gathering song is Holy God, We Praise Thy Name. Let us join together in singing as we begin our celebration. Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let's be in our mass and ask the Lord to forgive us for all of our sins. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us into everlasting life. Let us now praise God.
Let us pray. O God, creator and ruler of all things, look upon us and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all of our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Merciful. 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if your brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property, in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Move with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed I went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgive your brother from the heart. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord.
This weekend, we are celebrating our grandparents. This is grandparents' weekend. We all remember, right, that this weekend belongs to our grandparents. This is a time to thank them for all that they've done for us. And if they are in heaven, say a prayer for them. I'm sure that they will hear us. Although many grandparents today are active and vibrant, I think that Grandparents Weekend is a good time to reflect on all of our older people and ask ourselves this question, how do we measure the value of a person? Sad to say, many of us value the worth of people and what they can do, what they accomplish. We hear this when we attend the funeral of a young person. People say things like, how tragic, he died before he had a chance to live a full life. Or how tragic, she died before her life was fulfilled, with so much more she could have done. Clearly, too many of us value the life of a person and what they do. I actually remember St. Teresa, the little flower. What did she do? She washed dishes, she did the laundry, she set the table for meals, she spent most of her adult life in a convent, and she died when she was 24 years old that the church has made her the patron saint of the missions, not because of all that she did, but because of who she was. And God seems to think that old people have much value. Abraham and Sarah were retired when God called them to move to a new land and form a new people to prepare for the world for the coming of their son. They were probably in their 70s. The house was paid for. They could relax and enjoy life at a slower pace. God tells them only to sell their house and move to the start a family. Wow. Simeon and Anna were advanced in age when they had the greatest experience of their lives. They held the Christ child in their arms, and God revealed to them that this was the Messiah. After Mary and Joseph, they were probably the first people to know who he was. Zechariah and Elizabeth were in their old age when they had John the Baptist. In their advanced years, they also began a family. And they had the added pressure of preparing their son to be the greatest of all the prophets. We can hurt people when we judge them by their accomplishments instead of by who they are. Shame on us if we ever make any old person feel that they are a burden. We all love and treasure babies. Babies are wonderful. But think about it. What do babies do? They eat, they sleep, they cry, and they poop. That's what babies do. We certainly don't love them for all that they accomplish. We love them for who they are. So why can't we love old people in the same way? We can learn a lot about the value of old people from an 85-year-old man and from a group of third graders. A woman who works in a nursing home spends a lot of time talking and praying with the residents. She would write down what they would share with her in a book. This is the one prayer that she shared with an 85-year-old man. I miss being needed. Once the whole family depended on me. I was a breadwinner. I worked hard to take care of my family and I was proud. I was needed at work, in the community, and at home. Needed to decide things and to help people out. One day I even said in exasperation, does the whole world have to lean on me? Now I wish somebody would. The trouble is, now that I'm old, people have no idea what I'm good for. Well, Roy, neither do I, but I can find out. Maybe to be needed, a man doesn't have to be doing something. Maybe he can just be there, like a star. And a group of third graders were asked by the teacher to write down the answer to this question. What is a grandma? She took all her answers and wrote the following. This is from third graders. A grandma is a lady who has no children of her own. She likes other people's boys and girls, and they love her. A grandfather is a man, grandmother. Grandmas don't have to do anything except be there. They're old enough so they shouldn't play hard or run. It's enough that they drive us to the shore with the pretend horses and have lots of dimes ready. If they take us for walks, they should slow down past things like privy leaves and caterpillars. Grandmas never say, hurry up. You get there fat, but not too fat to tie your shoes. They wear glasses and funny underwear. Sometimes they take off their teeth and their gums. It's better if they don't play cards, except with us. They don't have to be smart, 
but only answer questions like, how come we can't see God? And where does the wind come from? They don't talk baby talk like visitors do, because it's too hard to understand. When they read to you, they don't skip or mind if it's the same story again. Everyone should try to have a grandmother, especially if they don't have television. But grandmothers are the only grown-ups who have time. The wisdom of third graders. A card, a phone call, a basket of fruit, or a silent prayer. Let's make sure that before this weekend comes to a close, we thank God for the gift of our grandparents. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, God and Son of God, God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from, from light, true God from true God, God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us, men and for, and for our salvation, salvation he, he came, came down, down from heaven, heaven. and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of a Virgin Mary and, and became man. For our, our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again, again on, on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right, right hand of the Father. He would come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In faith, let us now tell the Lord about all that we need. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, that we who are God's people, both in life and in death, may faithfully mediate God's love, mercy, and forgiveness through our words and deeds, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the grace to forgive those who have wronged us, that God will free our hearts so that we may forgive others as God has forgiven us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For a deep awareness of God's boundless forgiveness, that in our daily living and our experiences of our weaknesses, we may recognize God's unlimited forgiveness each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have been impacted by hurricanes or wildfires, that God will give them strength, protect them from harm, and speed the assistance that they need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are suffering, that God will heal the sick, bring comfort to those who are isolated, give strength to those fleeing violence, and hope to those seeking jobs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions we now hold in the silence of our heart, we pray with confidence and faith through Christ our Lord. Amen.
favor of our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all the church. O oh, our book of favor on our prayers, in your kindness accept those your servants' offerings, though each is offered to the honor of your name, may serve the salvation of all. And we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just and good in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, who so loved the world in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you love in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we lost in disobedience. So, Lord, with all the saints and angels, we to give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. And be holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy therefore is just repaid, but send me very much grief upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was prepared, betrayed, and mentioned willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. For you. In the summer way when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the breath of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. How may we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of a resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the life of your faith. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who will please you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us how to pray, and that's why we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Be with us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. The not on our sins on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, who him who takes away the sins of the world. Thus are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Good evening once again, and welcome to our Eucharist at St. Francis Parish in Triangle, Virginia. Special welcome to all of our parishioners and those who have been part of this Eucharist, uh, viewing us from throughout uh, the world, quite frankly, as well as here in the United States. A couple of announcements for our parishioners. A friendly reminder, if you are comfortable attending Mass in person during this pandemic, you are asked to please make a reservation. It is also very important to note that if you find that you are unable to attend Mass even on the day of the Eucharist, the Mass, that you please cancel and return your reservation in the Eventbrite system so that it might be made available to other parishioners. This allows as many people as possible to attend in-person Masses during the pandemic. To learn how to cancel tickets for the Mass if you have to do so, please view the video on our parish YouTube channel. This weekend, our second collection supports the annual Mission Cooperative Plan Appeal for our diocese. Normally, there would be someone here from a mission society speaking to you about their programs, their ministry, what they do. Our mission appeal this year is the Sisters of Our Lady of La Salette. This appeal helps our brothers and sisters who do not have access to basic pastoral services that support and grow their faith, such as mass, the sacraments, religious education, as well as basic needs like food, shelter, and health care. You can support these organizations through this week's second collection. If donating by check, please make your check payable to our parish and put MCP in the memo line. Through your support, the MCP appeal helps these mission organizations form vibrant faith communities and strengthens the global church. And we thank you in advance for your generosity. And this weekend is the last weekend that Friars John Alderson and Friars Henry Fulmer will be with us. They will be moving in the beginning of this new week to their new assignments. So once again, on behalf of all of us, I want to thank them for their many years of ministry here at St. Francis Parish and know that our thoughts and our prayers go with them. We wish them the best of everything, God's many blessings. And as a tribute to them, we now have a short musical presentation.
I didn't know I was going to do this. <laughs> um, it has truly been a pleasure here ministering at St. Francis of Assisi. It's been one of the parishes I wanted to come to for the longest time, and I'm glad I had the opportunity to be here. I also want to thank all the people in this parish for their generosity, their kindness, uh, and all the, they're always giving us the constant support. For that, we will always be very grateful, and we will always remember you. No matter where I am assigned to, I will remember the people of St. Francis. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the working of this heavenly gift take possession of our minds and bodies, that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail upon us. And we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you and keep you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.